So we got Aminos in blue res. This is dope. This is my first time trying the pre-workout not from like a sample packet, so. Oh my god, when the pre-workout kicks in while you're stuck in traffic, I'm not there yet! <laughs> we just made it to Embody and Ariana and I are going to do a workout. This is day one of my strength programming. Jasmine's been using Omar, so when I went there to visit in Toronto, I liked how they were doing it, how the plan was going. Now I'm also doing that with Omar Isaf. Here we go. We're gonna see how this is. I'm so cracked out right now, like, ah! <gasps> Caffeine. Hmm. What's up, YouTube? I'm going to go ahead and shoot a little commentary video box for this workout. My hair's all curly because I leave for New York tomorrow, and I was hoping they'd turn into like loose waves by tomorrow, you know? So I just went and got a little blowout. Like I said, I am now have like a strength programming routine with Omar. The reason that I did this is because I'm not cutting right now. I decided to change the show that I was doing to one in November. There's a show November 5th and I will be doing that one instead. It's the only other one that's in Houston that's like a national qualifier and everything. That is the show I'll be doing. Instead of the one on July 16th or 18th or whatever the other one was, um, I decided for reasons to not do that show. Therefore, I really liked the idea of the strength programming because as of right now, I feel that my workouts when I go into the gym are kind of random. I don't have any real structure to it. It's just kind of like, what do I feel like working out that day? What's not sore? And I just kind of play with it. And it hasn't, it doesn't leave me very motivated. It doesn't leave me super excited to go to the gym. I still do it. I enjoy my workouts. I get something out of it. I'm sore the next day, etc. But I just feel like when you're not cutting and you don't have a, that goal of losing pound measurements or losing um, inches measurements that way or you don't have like a number to track to kind of see progress or even pictures where you want to see you know more shreds or whatever throughout your body when you're cutting that's very motivating that drives me to go to the gym that makes me want to do plyos and do everything hard and fast and whatever i thought this transition into a little strength programming would be fun because you still get that kind of number satisfaction where the next week you're trying to hit a number five to ten pounds more than the week before and uh, you're making progress that way and your rep ranges and everything's just a little more structured a little more fun and having a goal and more structured is a goal and more structure is what I need right now as I'm trying to maintain slash build muscle in my body. I would like to maintain my upper body muscle and then maybe grow a bit on my lower body. I'd be happy with that. Those are my goals at the moment and that is why I'm transitioning to this and I think it's going to be really great. I feel that Omar is very educated in this. I learned a lot about my mobility and how it's actually I have really mobile hips for the most part. It's actually my ankles that are my issue which I didn't know before so now I have some ink ankle stretches and mobility work that I think are gonna do really well for me. I'm excited to improve my squats. Three lifts that I'm kind of focusing on are gonna be squats, sumo deadlift, and overhead press. I can't do anything chest related, which is why I generally avoid upper body actually. Since my surgery, my doctor just recommended that I not do anything in that area since I had complications last time from basically lifting and just the way my body reacted to it wasn't didn't go well. That is why I don't do chest anymore. I think that plenty of women with the breast augmentation do chest and have no issues with it. It was just happens, it's just the way that my body is or my body worked and he recommended that I avoid that from now on. So that is what I'm doing. And I think that about wraps that conversation up. I just wanted to explain to y'all what I'm doing now and what the game plan is from now on. This week is just kind of gonna be what I could get finished and I'm leaving for New York tomorrow, Thursday, and I'll be there until Monday afternoon. Obviously, that's gonna put a little hiccup. I'm probably not going to train while I'm in New York, but I'm ready to hit it hard and just kill it next week. And I'm really excited to start everything. This, pro this programming, these workouts are really difficult, so it's really cool to do something different out of the ordinary for me. Change it up, always fun in the gym, and that's that. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all enjoy the rest of the video. Toodles. Morning sunshine. I should let you know. Breakfast is a couple eggs and a couple egg whites, a couple slices of turkey bacon, and then this vanilla Greek yogurt with some strawberries. I feel like I'm so awkward vlogging lately. It's like it's like I'm going on a first date and I don't know what to talk about and I'm like, what, what's up guys? What, 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 do you, what do you want to talk about? 
doesn't even cover more than the bralette. Whatever. It is freaking hot up here, first of all. You go up to the fourth floor, for some reason, it's just very warm. I feel like I'm already kind of glistening. I'm so, so sweaty. It's humid, it's just humid. But I thought we'd just cover a topic today just for fun, just for, you know, fun. I don't know, I don't know what else to talk about. We are just gonna discuss how does one make money on YouTube? And this is obviously very relative to the person, but personally, I make money on YouTube through number one, um, views. How many views you get per video, you get paid for every video amount of views. You sign up with a network, well, at least this is what I did. I joined YouTube two years ago. And you sign up with a network, and then that network agrees to give you a percentage of your ad revenue sales or something. I think mine's like 80-20, I'm not really sure. Funny story, my network is some random like Russian company and they send me emails in Russian and I can't understand anything, nothing at all. So I don't even know how to break my contract with them even if I wanted to. But I will show you very quickly on my YouTube analytics app, revenue, last 28 days. And it just gives you an estimate of how much you made on your views, which mine's only at 6,000 right now, which is pretty much the lowest that I get because I haven't posted many videos recently. Typically, it'll be anywhere from like 6000 to $10,000 a month. And then I get 80% of that. That is what my first form of income is. Number two, second form of income. I have several sponsorships. All of your sponsorships, if you have a legitimate one, you have some kind of contract, it's probably like a year or I have one that's two years, and then they'll pay you monthly. You'll get like a salary, and then you also get, if they have like a coupon code or whatever, you can get commission. That would be my second form of income. I don't think I can disclose like how much they give me specifically, but I have three different, I guess, sponsorships that I am signed on contract with. Well, I get a monthly salary from each of them, as well as commission, which I don't really worry about because I don't push codes very much. I'm not about that, but uh, that is form of revenue number two. Number three is something that I don't really do at all, but that YouTubers do have open to them. YouTubers and Instagrammers and any social media people, you have a lot of companies contact you to promote or show their product, and they will pay you to just put that product in your video or to post a picture of it on Instagram, things like that. You can go to socialbluebook.com to see like how much a post of yours would be worth or how much you should be charging or blah, blah, blah. And again, as y'all probably know, I don't really do that because I always, I don't know, even if I find a good product and I'm down for it, I just always get weirded out by it at the end and then I don't end up doing it, so. There's no real reason that I don't do it, but I just, I just don't. And I don't like being pushy. I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of gal. I don't know, I don't know. Well, that is form of revenue number three. And then anything else would be like if you sell your own apparel or clothing or coaching or stuff like that, that would be another form of income. So that is how I make money. Do I make money any other way? I think that's it. Those are ways that peeps make money. You know what I always think though? If I make like six to $10,000 a month of my views, and my views are like, you know, whatever. Like how much does PewDiePie make? He's got multiple videos a day with over a million views. This guy's gotta be like a billionaire by now. I, I don't even get it. Okay, I'm about to head to the gym. And I just had a cup of coffee, so I don't want to have a pre-workout, so I'm just going to take a scoop of aminos with me. This is the blue Raz. So here we go. Cancel out. 